ladies and gentlemen, Sir James Dyson. Prime Warden, Chairman, Headmaster, Parents, Pupils and Leavers. Firstly, congratulations to all the prize winners. There seem to be quite a lot of them. Um, I've always avoided giving advice. Indeed, I've gone through life ignoring advice, unless that is I happen to agree with it. Before seeing the careers advisor, I ticked the box about liking the outdoors. Be an estate agent, he divined. Although he was trying to help, this proves that important life decisions are very personal. I'd like to share some of the experiences that have punctuated my life to attempt to draw something useful from them. And this is not advice, it's encouragement. I'm a maker. I've always wanted to engineer and create things. But I fear that making things may look complex from the outside and put people off. I want to challenge that. When you open one of our robots, for example, they do look impossibly complex. But most complex things can be broken down into a series of separate problems to be solved. And then complexity becomes manageable. The same is true of your journey through life. As you look to the future and life beyond Gresham's, don't let anyone tell you that something's impossible. Break down the challenge into simple objectives. Prove them wrong is a great motivator. If this speech is about anything, it's about the things I couldn't see when I was sitting where you are today. These are simply things that are clearer from the perspective of time. And I've broken it into five sections. Firstly, be curious. Throw yourself into everything. Try out everything and seize opportunities. And discover what it is you love. My experiences here at Gresham's, and shortly after I left, shaped me in ways I couldn't see at the time. My father was head of classics, and I was christened in the chapel. I'm a child of Gresham's. During the long holidays, I roamed the grounds here with fellow staff children, the Bruce Lockarts, Williams and Columbays, who are happily here with us today. I sailed for Morston, picnicked at Blakeney Point and Stifke, Ran every morning across the Holt Lows, splashing through the icy Glaven. Who couldn't be influenced by the vast open spaces of Norfolk? I threw myself into everything the school had to offer, including acting. Indeed, my last performance on this stage, I was trinculo to Tim Ewart of ITN's Caliban. <laughs> Logie, my late great headmaster, was a fan of the individual. He believed that exam results were important, but so were other skills, which is why he created the Corofina Club. Second, be counter-cultural. Look at things from different angles, maybe by starting the wrong way. Your view is as good as anybody else's. If different, it's almost certainly more interesting. I've always been naturally attracted to the prosaic, Glamour repels me. My obtuseness wants the dull to be exciting. And coming from a family of classicists, I should have become an academic or a surgeon, although the one who interviewed me didn't agree. <laughs> Instead, I went to art school. I ended up at the Royal College of Art, which is a hothouse of artists and designers such as David Hockney and Ridley Scott. However, Although a design student, I made the perverse decision to reject design as a career. I wanted to invent, design and make things to control the whole process. On graduating five years later, I chose to reject the excitement of that 60s swinging London scene. And instead, I headed down to Bath in a clapped out Isigenis Mini for life in a factory. Though, What's not immediate obvious is that, just like the products, I would need to travel all over the world. But first, I had to design, build and sell a high-speed landing craft. Then, recklessly, I set out on my own 
along with a hefty mortgage and a family. And rather than the glamour of computers or mobile phones, I've been interested in areas overlooked and out of fashion. And there's nothing wrong with that. Coming up with new technology for solid state batteries, electric motors and robots. OK, well, they're glamorous until you realise they're destined to put out the bins and fill the dishwasher. <laughs> Next, look out for guardian angels. Spend time with the people who encourage you. Be inquisitive, always wanting to learn. Inspiration will follow. When I sat where you are, I thought experience was important. Well, a necessity, in fact. I now know the opposite to be true. Surprisingly, naivety is helpful. Experience can be a cage, inhibiting and hard to escape from. And today, the world changes so quickly that freedom from experience can be an asset. Watch out for the experts, the boring know-it-alls. Ignore the naysayers and the doubting Thomases. I've met so many along the way, and trust me, they take the fun out of everything. <laughs> All they do is inhibit progress. My break came while I was at college. I went to raise some money to build a space frame theatre that I designed for the impresario Joan Littlewood. My unfortunate target was Jeremy Fry, a manufacturing entrepreneur, a rarity at the time and even more so now. Without hesitation, he said, I'm not giving you any money, but will you design a high-speed landing craft for me? Even more unusual, Jeremy Fry was an engineer and inventor. He believed, against prevailing thought, that engineers can make good entrepreneurs. I learned the art of iterative research and development, where you make just one change at a time. Just as importantly, to largely ignore what is called market research. This is not to say that you don't listen to customers. Of course you do, above all. But that type of market research can be misleading of true current opinion. And proof of this is that politicians live by it. <laughs> Most importantly, it can never predict the future. None of us can. We have to take our own view and trust our own instincts. You may be just as wrong, but at least it's your failure. Next up, embrace failure. Of course, you can learn many things from a textbook or through others. However, you can learn more and viscerally from constantly experimenting and failing. Failure causes you to examine and overcome the problem. Getting it right first time does not give you that same ingrained learning. People like to portray brilliance as effortless, but that's seldom the reality. Success demands determination to overcome problems, concentration and stamina, which afterwards can look like a flash of brilliance. The harder you try and the more determined you are, the more you get out of it. My life has been one littered with failures, and failure comes in many shapes and sizes. My electric car, probably the closest I've come to a glamorous product, was my saddest failure. Not a failure of the car or the design or the team, rather a commercial one. We found that we and other makers lose stacks of money making electric cars. The batteries cost too much, particularly for a car like ours, which was packed with them to give them a decent range. Ending the project was very hard, not to mention rather costly. But out of that failure, new life has emerged. Our pioneering car engineers are bringing new perspectives across all we do. Finally, do something you love. Now, I love painting at Gresham's. Unfortunately, art in those days was not considered a career. And in a red rag to the bull moment, I rode off on my Honda 50 to art school in London. I've always pursued things that interest me and which I enjoy, and one project has led to another. To those of you moving on to the next chapter, I urge you to throw yourself into everything. Be a doer rather than one of those 
far too many attention-seeking grandstanders who solve nothing. Be different, embrace failure, and discover your mojo. Believe in your ideas, ignore the naysayers. Instead, through science, engineering, the arts, ideas, and ingenuity, shape the world in your image for the better. My hope is that the Dyson Steam Building will nurture just these ideas. Never give up in your quest to see them through. Make it a world of doers, never grandstanders.